Hi everyone, I'm excited to share with you the first lesson of my Optimal Circadian Health course. Now, circadian biology is a critical pillar of health that I believe isn't uh, as widely appreciated as it should be, given that our bodies, like almost all organisms on planet Earth, rely on optimal circadian signals to, to thrive. If you enjoy this video, check out the rest of the course, which is filled with practical tips um, to optimize your circadian rhythm and mitigate the artificial light environment that uh, most of us live in. Thanks and enjoy. Okay, so what are circadian rhythms and how did they arise? And this is going to give us context for the rest of the course. So what happened is that for the duration of humans and life's evolution, even prior to the emergence of um, complex life, is there was this cycle of day and night. And throughout this rotation of the earth around the sun, we have intense light during the day and we have a complete absence of night of light during the, the night. And as you can imagine, there's a temperature shifts, there's shifts in the availability of energy for organisms to use. And this was the prelude to the, the evolution of life. So what, what we can think is that the there was significant selection pressure or selection for organisms that were basically able to adapt to these changing environmental conditions. So life on Earth evolved in the oceans. And even before we uh, evolved all the kind of functions that make us um, mammals and make us um, vertebrates, there, there was this primordial soup. And even within the ocean, there's there's an ability of certain light wavelengths to penetrate. Um, and even in there, there's this uh, ability of organisms to respond and change their behavior and change the way that they're regulated based on the presence or the absence of, of light. So circadian rhythms is that, that we needed a way of um, timing all these reactions and all these hormonal functions and we the life needed a way of um, again altering their function based on the changes in the availability of of energy of um, temperature and the, the ones that were able to do that were the ones that survived and what you can think about this is that this is a, a perfectly coupled cycle so it's there's a a, a, a symmetrical um, presence and absence of, of sunlight, again, based on the rotation of the earth. And there was a clock timing mechanism that, that evolved in order to um, allow organisms to, uh, to operate in, with respect to, to this changing day and night cycle. So the, the origination of the word means approximately around a day and the reason why that's relevant is because the the intrinsic timing mechanism um, inside organisms is approximately 24 hours and it isn't quite 24 hours meaning that basically um, it needs to be um, synced up to the sun and receive these external environmental cues from um, light predominantly in order to uh, maintain its synchronization. So that's essentially um, what circadian rhythms are. They are internal endogenous, what, what are called as endogenous rhythms that um, are timing mechanisms. So how does this relate or how does this work in, in a human? So essentially we have the, the perception of light through, through the eyes is perceived and that light is um, transmitted all the way through to um, a, a very um, old and ancient part of our brain and um, which essentially integrates that signal receives that signal and then is able to coordinate or keep time um, in the whole body and that's that area in the brain um, is called the suprachiasmatic nucleus um, there's two of them either on either side and the suprachiasmatic nucleus or the SCN is the master clock of the brain. And what it um, allows is that it coordinates um, clocks that run um, 
all throughout the body. So it is not the only clock in the body, but it is the chief clock. And if you can understand that there's a, a hierarchy of an order of operations and a hierarchy, it is um, at the top. So where else are their clocks? Well, they're, they're basically all throughout the body and all throughout um, your different organs and cells have intrinsic timing mechanisms. So they, um, again, are helping your body regulate its um all the, the complex biochemical and other type of um, hormonal reactions that are going on and they all have clocks and they all sync up um, from the from the up to the suprachiasmatic nucleus and as you can see and um, things like um, behavior when to look for food when to um, rest all, all those are going to need to be coordinated because um, there's obviously we're going to need to look for food during the daytime hours um, for because we are um, a d daytime animal and these these all um, need synchronization. So like I mentioned, this is a 24 hour cycle, but it's not it, it can't run by its own and it needs to sync up to um, external cues. So how does it do that? So we've got to synchronize clocks with the, the most important what's known as zeitgeber or um, time giver and that is light so so light is what's known as the, the primary zeitgeber or, or primary um, environmental input that um, programs our body's um, internal endogenous 24-hour uh, cycle so there are a range of secondary zeitgebers that also uh, allow our body to recognize um, what time it is and we'll talk about those throughout the course but essentially they're things like temperature they're things like the meal content and um, when we eat the meal and there's also things like uh, exercise and and even social cues so think about um this concept of we've got this internal clock running but it constantly needs synchronization with the environment and um, and that is what um, we are doing when we're um, doing our circadian practices is we are constantly looking to um, give our body um, coherent signals through um, through the primary, the secondary zeitgebers and and the information that we're sending it. So so the next question is how does our body sense light? Um, and we I just previewed it um, for you recently uh, just before in terms of the your, the eye, but. I'll explain a bit more, and, and this is going to be very important later on when we talk about what, what to do, especially when we're mitigating our um, artificial light environment. But basically, the body senses light through um, photoreceptors, and these are um, proteins um, that exist in various cells in a range of your, or your organs, most traditionally in in your eyes but also in your skin and and also in other organs and there the ability of the body to sense light is how it um receives that um light signal and then entrains all those circadian rhythms so the 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 traditional kind of um, photoreceptors that that um, science and people were most familiar with were the the visual photoreceptors and think about how um, an, an image is formed and, and how the camera you basically need to use a camera to form an image and that that's the rods and the cone cells um, in the eye and they help us perceive shapes and form um, and again this is a, a real camera function but what what we learned um, not that long ago was that there's also non-visual photoreceptors and this is more of a, a detector function and what the, these non-visual photoreceptors do is that they detect the presence or the absence of certain light wavelengths. And the ones that that I'm going to talk about most is one called melanopsin. And, and that uh, detects the presence or the absence of blue light. And there are others, um, one called neuropsin, which detects presence or absence of, of UV light. But essentially, the importance of this concept is that your eye is not only um, able to form images, but it's also f able to detect the the presence or the absence of light. And this is key for um, entraining your circadian rhythm. So let's go into that a little bit 
deeper. So here's a, a, a diagram of or a cross section of your eye. And what you can see here is that the the light or the image is coming is perceived and let's say it's it's a tiger. And what happens is that um, these photoreceptors here, the rods and the cones, um, receive that image and they transmit it to the to your brain through uh, the optic nerve and then through the um, uh, optic tracks to to your suprachiasmatic well to your brain and we'll talk about the suprachiasmatic nucleus soon um, and then where the image can get processed but with the 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 presence or the absence of light that gets recognized by, by a very um, small subset of cells and those cells are called um, intrinsically um, photosensitive retinal ganglion cells and that's a bit of a mouthful but just um, know that there's a small number of cells that exist in your retina that, ex that basically um, use this protein called melanopsin to detect blue light and they're going to be firing when or sending signals when they detect blue light and remember historically the only blue light they were getting would be in in the middle of the sun um, during during the day and so this eye your eye is an extremely advanced technology and i like to think about it as having these multiple purposes and these multiple functions and again the rods and the cones in, in your retina will detect shapes and, and images and they form images but you also have these um these cells that can detect blue light and let's think about exactly what that looks like and Again, we're going to go into this later throughout the course, but sunlight has a range of different wavelengths, and that just describes the um, the type of of light that is kind of hitting Earth. And what it, there's visible light and there's non-visible light, and we can see within this narrow band of um, of three hundred and eighty to seven hundred and eighty um, nanometers of wavelength. And what melanopsin, which is that blue light detector, is it it recognizes and it gets triggered around this this particularly this blue blue level. So if if anyone um, has ever been to the doctor and they have had a light shined in their eye, maybe they they accidentally hit the head and and they were being assessed in the emergency department. The pup what's known as the pupillary light reflex, which is when you get uh, a torch sh shone in your eye is going to be um is the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells and your melanopsin blue light detectors are a key part of how this works and melanopsin was first discovered in frogs and it is highly conserved um, across evolution so it makes sense when we when we're realizing how important light and dark cycles are is that um animals needed a way of of recognizing when blue light is available because it's it's critically important information about the time of day so remember that the melanopsin is the blue light detector and it exists in your eye and, and it also exists in some other tissues but we will talk about that soon so the next concept that um, is important and that i want you to to, to think about is um, melatonin now, melatonin, it sounds similar and structurally, or from a chemical point of view, it has, um, it, it has some similarities. But melatonin is um, a very, very um, ancient hormone that, that basically gets made in your pineal gland. Uh, and it gets made on the absence of signaling from melanopsin. So what that means is that when... Um, it's not daytime when it's nighttime and melanopsin isn't being triggered then your body makes melatonin now melatonin is um is a very very uh, ancient hormone and it, it gets made in that in that pineal gland and not only does it tell your body that it's nighttime but it's a very very important um antioxidant hormone so again here we go when when there's sun is up you're not going to be making any um, melatonin at all because your body doesn't need to rest and digest and relax it needs to be active but when it's nighttime when it senses the absence of light then melatonin gets made um, and the body is able to do some very very important um, what's known as cellular garbage cleaning and taking the cellular trash out um, and that is why melatonin is so important
So again, melatonin exists, has existed for 2.5 billion years and, and it is a key um, indicator or, or um, indication that there's circadian processes going on in all times of types of, of life forms. So remember that melatonin gets turned off when we're exposed to bright light, which includes um, blue wavelengths. So how do, how do we um, put this all together? Well, let's think about the ideal circadian conditions that um, we evolved under and that what our, our, our biology and what our bodies are expecting. So we have a day, a day, and in that day, we've got these waxing and waning um, different wavelengths of sunlight. And we're going to go through those pretty soon in the next um, video. But um, what happened is that natural blue light um, would trigger our melanopsin um, and the body, our body would be awake, would be active, would be looking for food. So um, coupled to that is would be nice. So there'd be a complete absence of light. Our pineal gland would make melatonin, would be doing our sleep, our rest and our um, repair. So this is a, a perfectly coupled um, cycle and it's a balanced um, situation where there's complete um, harmony and um, a cyclical nature of things. And that situation is what gives an optimal circadian health because they're perfectly timed circadian signals so that all those clocks in the body from all your peripheral clocks, the ones in, the, in your organs, all the way up to your suprachiasmatic nucleus are, um, are timed perfectly. So let's do a quick summary. So all life on earth, almost all life on earth evolved 24 hour rhythms and circadian rhythms evolved as internal timing mechanisms that allowed us all organisms to adapt to the changing conditions of light and heat based on the Earth's rotation. And the suprachiasmatic nucleus is that master clock and it coordinates all your um, body's timing mechanisms and it receives input straight from the eye um, through things like melanopsin, um, that, that blue light detecting protein. The We also have um, clock timing mechanisms in all our other organs um, and they receive uh, information through um, various other environmental cues to time all our body functions um, and melatonin is our is our key hormone of of night which sig signals to our body that it's night time and it can only be secreted or, or made and um, from the pineal gland when we don't have blue light so what what we need to think about is that this is a, an orchestra and your body is an orchestra and timing is everything and just like you're going to have a, a bad s sound if your conductor is is not operating properly so is are you going to have a problems from a from a biological point of view and from a disease point of view if things aren't timed properly and you can imagine that the conductor is the suprachiasmatic nucleus and just imagine that um what what he's doing is he's constantly needing input from the internal from the external environment um perhaps new music sheets um, and that is essentially what is going on um, in your body so with that let's move on to the next uh, module